Hi, and welcome to the Tiny Little Podcast, where we discover spirituality together. And it is almost Gemini season, and Jeff is back to let us know what we need to embrace for. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Laura. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So what's been happening uh, in uh, your Taurus season so far? All good? It's beautiful. It's actually really beautiful. You remember how we were discussing that um, first we were floating a lot, right? With the Pisces energies, we had to float. We had to trust ourselves. We had to listen. We had to um, really sense what Mm -hmm. the future vision is. And then the Taurus uh, season already brought some actual manifestations actual material results okay not all of it right not the whole vision but some first steps and uh, when it comes to my first steps I actually absolutely love it because apart from being astrologer I'm also a teacher and a professor and yeah I can see how that goes forward for me oh that's so exciting and is this beautiful energy continuing in Gemini season or is it the whole shift of energy there is an interesting mix all together right because I I definitely need to start talking about the notorious Mercury retrograde Uh, (laughs) (laughs) by the time this podcast will be published we will already be in the middle of it okay Mm. because this Mercury retrograde is the second one Uh, this year we typically experience three mercury retrogrades a year all right and every um, mercury retrograde period lasts for three weeks so this is the second one and it starts on the 10th of may okay and it ends on the 3rd of june Mm. it will be or it is happening uh in two signs okay so it starts in gemini yeah which is ruled by mercury so we will Ooh. definitely be feeling a lot of it okay and then it kind of backtracks back into the sign of taurus so what does that mean altogether since mercury rules thinking and communication and how we learn and how we digest information how we share ideas how we share our opinions right what is our communication style that will all be up for a review Okay, so I would imagine there are a few directions that are definitely essential to review. (laughs) All right. So one of these being the communication style as such, Mm -hmm. right? Because every single person has their own communication style, right? And so sometimes it's really good to um, kind of take a stock, right? How do we speak to each other? How do we show up? And communication style is not only the words that we use it's also our face expression Mm -hmm. and do we smile do we make pauses in our conversation what is um what is what does it mean to to communicate safely what does it mean to communicate inclusively so a lot of those those things are are becoming really important especially as we are going through a, this huge transformation process right that mm-hmm. we are going through the whole year i would say with a lot of different planetary changes and alignments i think we all can feel how we we are changing yes Oh, definitely. I, I literally, yeah, I literally was was thinking about it this weekend that I, I've changed so much when mm. I take even six months, let alone a year or two years. Internally, there was a, a huge shift, and so of course that should uh, mirror how we show up in the world now, how we speak to ourselves and to others now. Okay, mm. so that is one big area, and then another big area is of course our mental stories and our mental narratives i would say uh, that we were talking about venus a lot right in our previous podcast that it was going through retrogrades and meeting pluto and and so we could see that there were a lot of reassessment and really profound permanent changes when it comes to our relationships when it comes to our money when it comes to what's essential to us when it comes to our priorities and when it comes to our values right so a lot of those really fundamental things in our life we're already somehow changing right and so this Mercury retrograde, although people tend to 
kind of fear it, right? <laughs> oh my God, this is again on and I will forget what to say and my my hard disk will probably be blocked or uh, I don't know, forgotten somewhere or lost or whatever. At the same time, there is a lot of blessing in the Mercury retrograde because mm -hmm. what it gives us, it gives us three weeks of slow down, take a stock of what we usually don't pay attention to and that being our mental stories our mental narratives our mental scripts okay mm -hmm. in all areas of life again related to our relationships related to our self-worth related to our relationships with money and abundance, re related to the way we want to live our lives now that so much has changed and shifted, mm -hmm. related to our future visions and what we want to do in the world to help community or, you know, somehow spread our gifts and, and talents in the world. So a lot of these things will be uh, up for a review. And right. then once Mercury will, would be moving back from Gemini, uh, Gemini and, move, and moving into Taurus, this is where, where it relates to material reality, right? First, we kind of went through, aha, uh -huh, what do I think about it? What do I believe in? Or what do I play on repeat in my mind when it comes to X, right? Or, or <laughs> whichever theme or topic we, we discuss here. So when it comes into Taurus, you already have the opportunity to say, "Aha, uh -huh, okay, what kind of actual habits can I shift? How can I change it in material reality in, in my daily life or daily work? Or, okay, now that I think about it differently, now, now that I've got a different perspective on the theme, how can I implement it in my life? Right. So it's, it's basically like a whole review uh very deeply inward but also then at the same time a review of how we want to deal with this review so it's also taking the steps of the review all in one go yeah we can say so but at the same time i mean it's three weeks right it's not just yes. one day <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> we really have the opportunity to kind of ponder about stuff right and then yeah. even if that yeah. will be just one big realization in your life yeah. with one little change and shift the consequence can be huge yes yeah that's true and is it is it also then a good time to um think ahead further about things that you want to like manifest and the things that you say oh i've got i've got different plans um but how am i going to work it out which is also sort of a review, is also sort of how am I going to make things work? Mm -hmm. Is it a good time yes. for that as well? I would say so, because typically Mercury retrogrades, they are good for mm, reassessing. Re it's everything was re, right? When yeah. you remember, <laughs> like, take verbs which start with re, this is Mercury retrograde remember reprioritize reassess reconsider reevaluate remember so all of it is the retro retrograde words right right and so if you've got some ideas for example or if you've got a strategy or a vision which we were working on uh, back in may and april this is a really good time to make adjustments to that strategy or make adjustments to that vision to mm -hmm. actually get into the nitty gritty details. And we will talk about it um, related to the Gemini energy as such, which is about details. So you yeah. go into those details and you see, aha, uh -huh, okay, so that can work as a part of my vision, but that probably not. So what can I exchange? Right, I see. Okay. And what are, what are on Gemini itself when yeah. retrograde is. Uh no longer there for a while uh what's happening then to the energies well the mercury retrograde will last until june 3rd right mm -hmm. but at the same time um there is something that we call shadow 
A shadow of the, the shadow of the planets of retrograde. What is it? The shadow zone of the retrograde. Maybe you've heard about it. Oh, potentially, probably. I okay, let me explain what it is. <laughs> so imagine that a planet is moving forward, right? Yeah. Then it stations retrograde at one specific degree, and then it goes backwards. And when it goes backwards. Obviously, it doesn't move backwards, but this is the optical illusion that we have here from the Earth. So it goes backwards in the degrees of the uh, zodiacal wheel. And yeah. so it trespasses the same uh, territory that it was already moving forward. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, so like right? a swing. Yeah, exactly. And so... This is where we're experiencing, experiencing retrograde. And then at one point, it will station again direct and will go direct and trespass again the same territory that it has already been in twice. Aha, okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So when it moves direct the first time, we, we call it shadow zone because mm -hmm. it already is in the territory it will be going backwards. Uh -huh. All right. Yes. And when it stations direct after going backwards and goes the third time through the same territory, this again is the shadow zone. Uh -huh. Right. So you get like right. twice the shadow zone. Yes. <laughs> That's why Mercury retrograde is not really three weeks. It's really longer. <laughs> right. I see. Because it it's really like a, a like a whole slow motion motion. Exactly. 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 Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, the world is doing a good job of keeping us overdrive on overdrive anyway. So the universe should also have its own mechanism to slow us down. Yes, exactly. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is that uh, when Mercury will station direct on the 3rd of June, mm -hmm. we will still not be back, fully back into our thinking capacity, so to say. Okay. We will still, Mercury will still be going through the shadow zone until June 18. Okay. okay? So that would be the, the time still to kind of slowly come back to normal, so to say, slowly switch from the intuition into thinking, okay? Because yes. when Mercury is in a retrograde, my biggest hint and recommendation is always use your intuition, trust your intuition. It's really more about feeling and sensing mm -hmm. than thinking okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so you were asking if we are kind of after the sort of june if we're back to the thinking if we're back uh, or, or what kind of energies are there and so i would say that we probably could all feel like we are on a low start the whole year pretty much right mm. first we started with the venus retrograde and mercury retrograde in the beginning of the year yes. then we went into the Pisces season with a lot of Pisces and we were swimming and we couldn't see anything and was all fog and creativity and trust right mm -hmm. then we kind of got a little bit of fire with the area season but still with the, such um, an amount of Pisces energy we were already getting inspired to do something and launch somewhere but still without certainty right yes <laughs> definitely then yeah. we went into the tourist season so we, we thought okay I don't see much in front of me, but I've got the urge, I've got inspired with the new idea. So I'll at least start kind of acting on it, right? Mm -hmm. Taking some first material steps into the world, like, okay, I'll do this and this and that. And so with this, with this Mercury retrograde, it's a little bit like, okay, you've got the new vision. Now, how can you reassess it? What needs to be added? What needs to go away? What needs to stay? What needs to go? And so... After the Mercury retrograde, and especially after the shadow, I feel like this is really when the sling is freely flying, when you are like, okay, now I've done all this sensing and seeing and, and, and uh, feeling and trusting and ideating and reassessing and changing the values and transforming myself. And there is a lot of uh, the, the 
Pisces energies will start slowly be exchanged for the Aries. Okay, mm-hmm. so all the all the planets uh, which were floating nicely floating in Pisces, including Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, will subsequently subsequently move into Aries uh, throughout May. And so we'll feel a lot of this uh, fire boost again. And yeah, I would believe that in the second part of June, this is where we really can apply all this fire and updated strategy and ideas into the new life. Uh Uh-huh. Wow. So it's going to be like an actual go for it type of energy just do it i would suggest so yeah i would suggest so but why oh, don't we look good. into the gemini energy so that people would know what to expect of that season yes please <laughs> perfect so let's talk about the strong and healthy expression of gemini and that season starts and begins on the 20th or 21st of may beginning on, uh, depending on your time zone And so, as I mentioned, the strongest part of Gemini is really, or what what it rules, is our logical mind. It rules our thinking, our communication, um, how we learn, our learning styles, right? Some people are more, you know, about... uh, reading and studying on their own some people prefer uh, going to you know sign up for a class some people need to do it in order to remember and to understand how it works so it's really about these parts of our life and um makeup so to say design right yes yeah T- typically people with the um strong Gemini energies, they are very good, very, they are skilled presenters and public speakers, okay. right? So it's really all about working with words in one way or another. Some are writers, some are speakers, some are uh, philosophers, well, not, not philosophers, but uh, teachers can be as well. Typically, they have a very good memory If there are no other conditions in the chart, they can really have a very good memory. And so they collect information. They really feed on energy, uh, feed on uh, information, right? They can be the walking encyclopedias, right? You speak with a person and they are like, I know this and I know that. And they know, you know, they remember the years and they have the stories about everything. And you're like, okay. Yeah. (laughs) How, how can they remember? keep it all exactly <laughs> how do they keep it all in their heads and so again since it concerns the mind they can be quite quick quite mm-hmm. witty uh, with a good memory with a good either math or language skills mm-hmm. so typically again this this energy can uh, gift a person with the possibility to learn multiple languages to switch easily in a conversation and like really have it in in their mind in their brain so Mm -hmm. for example i (laughs) i go to yoga classes online uh, which are led by a friend of mine alina which probably also be in your at your podcast uh, at one point and she's amazing with remembering those really long yoga postures in Sanskrit. She will just go like so easy and you can see she's not reading. Like she remembers and she just, you know, drops them in the class and you're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> How, How do you, do you remember, remember all that? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's, it's not just yes. two or three, it's like a lot. Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. I think I've, we all have these people that, remember exactly where they were on holiday in 2003 for example and yeah I don't even remember where I was last week so <laughs> I don't know what holiday I was doing in 2003 did I Here we go. no Here I didn't <laughs> maybe because Gemini is not the strongest one in your energetic mix no that's not no it isn't <laughs> <laughs> here we no. go here we go <laughs> so yeah a few more points about gemini energy is that it's typically um gives a person a possibility to 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 be really easygoing you know it's very friendly it's very active uh it's very 
mentally stimulating, right? As I said, these people, they typically want to learn, to read, to, to engage with someone, to, to talk, to communicate. There will be a lot of this kind of movement to even buzz, right? Yes. And um, Gemini archetype also rules short trips and travels right so really short like not the distant one not the i just hop on a, on a plane and i will just you know go it's really um just moving i don't know just to go to another city or to uh be really active in your neighborhood so it's really like moving, moving. right but not yeah. too far right <laughs> It's like a little bounce ball, the Gemini's. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Especially mm. when it comes to ideas and communication, that's for sure. Because uh -huh. they're always the ones that would have the latest information or the ones who would sign up for three or five different uh, courses or trainings or modules. And, uh, you know, <laughs> they're eternal students. That's for sure. That's for sure. Oh, okay. That's exciting. Yeah. And what else is happening? Happening. Uh, what else is there anything that we or are there actually signs because uh, if I hear they're very like bouncy and that kind of stuff but what for the signs that can't handle all this bounce they are a bit slower will they go do they need a lot of grounding probably don't they well, yes, it's interesting that you are mentioning it because, of course, I'm explaining this archetype in a pure kind of way, right? Yes. And uh, it really depends on our personal charts, mm -hmm. like how much of this energy do we have and how freely can we uh, work with it, right? So mm -hmm. one dimension is really our natal chart. If our third house, which is represented by, by Gemini, is well placed situated or our gemin uh, our mercury is well placed you know mm -hmm. it's not in the water or it's <laughs> like it really likes air signs because you know air is thinking communication or it likes fire in when it's placed somewhere in the water or in the earth it can be a bit slower it can be a bit sluggish it can mm -hmm. you know it's like try singing under the water so it's a little harder right and so on one hand, when we add another dimension to it, we can think, okay, when there is the Gemini season, mm -hmm. we all get to become a little bit more chatty, a little bit more open, a little bit more wanting communication, a little bit more wanting learning, a little bit more wanting some new information, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit more than in the previous months when we were just floating and maybe spending more time with, within ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So it's more social, so to say. It's more, um, you could probably expect more uh even more media or more information or people reading more after a pose right um and then what is helping us to go through this kind of shift in the energy from mm -hmm. this you know more inward contemplative time into more buzzy fuzzy and and communicative is the mercury retrograde so it will slow us down anyway. anyway. It will say, okay, not too fast, <laughs> not mm -hmm. too fast. Right, I see. So that would, yeah, so yeah, there's the universe taking care of everything. It will still be balanced. Totally, totally. totally. Well, of course, we can always help. We can always help. We can always uh, provide some support with spiritual practices, with meditation, mm. with going out in, in the nature, and of course, with some crystals. Yes, definitely. Yeah, there is actually um, a set that we're doing for the Geminis, well, for all the Zodiacs. And I find with the Gemini ones, um, there are a lot of crystals that are of the middle chakras quite a bit so there's quite a few there's a couple of heart ones there's solar plexus there's throat um and then one one crown and one uh root chakra so you can see like they're all stimulating and helping the gemini so for example like a citron uh it brings it, it stimulates that joy that they already have and the energy and the fun so but yeah then equally you've got black onyx which is a grounding one that's they they all also need it so yeah i think yeah it's a really yeah really nice set for that i suppose but also the heart chakra is that something that the gemini 
needs to work on AB? Is it like a balancing stone for them? Do they mm-hmm. need to feel a bit more in their heart and a bit more be open? I would say what kind of rings a bell right away is that Gemini people need to learn to slow down their minds, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because typically they're way too attached to their minds, way too attached to thinking, way too attached to talking. So of course, uh, it's hard to to let go or hard to say, okay, this t- tomorrow I will not think at all or tomorrow I will not talk at all. Mm. So it's really slowing down what helps, right? And so what they need to learn is to relax, slow down the minds and especially come back to their body and intuition, okay? Because mm. they place way too much or tend to place way too much focus and priority on the on the mind Mm -hmm. and way too less uh, value on the body and the intuition in fact it's it's even hard for many people with the very strong gemini energies to even connect to the intuition they might Uh not hear it because the 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 mind is so loud loud right so that's why there's like two heart chakra crystals in there just to help connect them with their intuition and listening to the heart Oh, yeah beautiful. yeah that's a good one yeah but let's take a look at the unhealthy expression of Ooh. this energy so oh, yes. that we know we know what to expect right mm-hmm. so since i was talking about this mentally very active and stimulated mind um the shadow side of of gemini can be quite being quite scattered and unfocused mm. Okay. okay so think about it all over the place the mind which is all over the place or we can compare it to the hundred tabs opened in our browser on on the laptop right and you are like oh i have all of them but <laughs> guilty, guilty. <laughs> i do have some gemini i believe in my archetypes <laughs> well i we'll am guilty of the- that one <laughs> We live in the world that praises the mind and forgets about the rest. So we're kind of all pushed into it. And then, of course, the question is, how can we find balance on our own? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it can. It's just we just need to know that this is the feature of the or a trait of this energy, right? Mm-hmm. This being unscattered, losing focus, uh, making mistakes as well. Oh, so yes. that's why probably there is re- uh, Mercury retrograde as well. It's about, okay, if you do mistakes, check them really several times, okay? Check your contracts, check when you're booking tickets, check when you are scheduling something important. Really double attention mm-hmm. there because just because right <laughs> because yes. there are mistakes but there are there are some miscommunications or something uh, you know is not working out uh, with it with attack and so on yes. so yeah take put, pay some attention there okay oh okay that's a good one so we need like a crown chakra crystals for that can be yes mm, okay then let's uh l- take a look at it from a different perspective. Uh, I would say that the strength of a Gemini energy is to go wide and broad, okay? When we talk about information and knowledge, for example, as I said, these people would be the jacks of all trades. They will know everything. They will have tried everything. They want, uh, you know, different things. They are curious uh, without end. And so it's really about... Uh, knowing a lot or knowing something about very different subjects Mm -hmm. so they might be a little superficial they might just a little bit about everything Mm -hmm. but they might not be going into the depth of things Uh uh-huh right right i see so yes yeah yeah so depth might be missing there and that might um yeah it really depends on the topic okay so if let's say yeah (laughs) you can go into anything in depth right our our life is beautiful this way (laughs) you can Mm -hmm. really become the best engineer or the best mathematician and you know you really go deeper and deeper and deeper but when we talk about emotional depth this is not the energy 
this is not the energy okay the, mm -hmm. it's more about thinking and yeah. you know logical reasoning using logical reasoning mm -hmm. but not really going into the depth emotionally ah are they a bit emotionally detached then as well from they're others? not detached they're i would say avoiding of course again it's very individual it really depends yeah. on all the um and the personal history and what the person has been through whether it's uh, whether this person has uh, more masculine or feminine energy regardless mm. of the gender there are a lot of different conditions that we need to look into but mostly um, as it is observed this energy is not about emotion they uh -huh. would just avoid talking about it or would they will just you know change the subject because that is not interesting for them and interesting ah, okay right okay that's interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> you might observe different people right yes <laughs> and yeah as i mentioned uh, already it might be very hard for them to reconnect with their intuitive abilities okay mm -hmm. or to let go of the rational grief they really want everything to be rational. They really want to prove, like prove it to me. Give me the theory, give me the 120 scientists who published the mm -hmm. approved papers that it is true. So mm -hmm. it's really hard for them to kind of realize that this world is not only materialistic. Aha. Uh -huh. Are they, it sounds to me also they, because they live so much in the logical and give me the proof, um that they are tough believers so they they are not the first person to believe that x y and z is existing because they need proof uh -huh. correct okay. i don't want to generalize though of course no, because of course i have um, i have worked with many people i have worked with many clients and i have a lot of friends as well so i can definitely test all the astrological theories on them so to say yes so it really again depends if, if a person can have gemini sun but then uh pisces moon for example right or, yes. or pisces uh let's say south south node and so the spiritual part of them will will be really will be really strong so they will know that there is spirituality they will know that there are energies mm. they will know that there is something bigger but if a person would have different placements and Gemini energy is very strong mm. and there is none of water on or none, you know, something that, that brings in the spiritual part, they will be the strongest skeptics. The strong like skeptics, that's the word I was yes. looking for. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I yes. couldn't find the word. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. see. Okay. Great. Um, what yeah. else do we have to embrace? Oh no, embrace. Yeah embrace or embrace yeah yeah very correct absolutely well i would say some other things about the gemini energy which can play out during the season is that it's it might be very unstable okay mm -hmm. because as we were talking it can be scattered and then focused in in people right with the thinking with the communication and so there is a certain instability in it right mm -hmm. it can be oh let's meet tomorrow oh no i've just changed my mind it will be you know the meeting will be in five days or, or let's let's meet next week right so it can be a lot of changes mm -hmm. a lot of those kind of <laughs> instability or ever changing it's really a very changing energy that wants variety it wants to experience different things so not always it will do what it promised <laughs> Uh -huh. to do. Yes, okay so because mercury is a trickster from the mythology it's really a trickster planet who was not only communicated but was always also making some pranks and jokes you know yeah. <laughs> so uh, down to the point of uh of a lie so in the very very like very low shadow energy of a gemini it, it's a liar it's a trickster it's a mm -hmm. person who can work with the words really masterfully so he or she can always kind of get out of they, what they have said or didn't say mm -hmm. you know yes. <laughs> there is always a way how to There's put it, way how out. To yeah. it. <laughs> yeah correct so let's keep that in mind that they're definitely during especially during mercury retrograde there will be changes there will be uh, updates or amends so just be flexible go mm -hmm. with it it's okay if a meeting didn't happen today and it will will instead happen in two days yes. it's okay if we plan something and then we had to reschedule it it's fine just mm. go with the flow and be open 
Yes, I think that's always the best anyway, because you never know what's happening. <laughs> true, 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 true. true. And um, are we ready to talk about the moons? Yes, we are. What's Luna going to do this month? The Luna Luna. Well, the good news is that um, the eclipse season uh, will be closed, right, by mm -hmm. the end of May. We will have survived two eclipses, <laughs> one <laughs> in Taurus and another in Scorpio. Um, so... Uh, when the new moon comes, the, the new moon in Gemini on the 30th of May, in nine degrees of Gemini, the um, eclipse season will have been officially closed. Like, okay, we, mm -hmm. we've done our new change, new twist in the, in the trajectory of our lives. And so this new moon in, in Gemini, I think it's very nice, especially after the intensity of everything that was happening in, during eclipse season, right? Mm -hmm. So new moons are always about, you know, again, new intentions or uh, new, what, new seeds. What do we want to plant? And so, of course, first of all, if you have your chart, check where the nine degrees of Gemini falls in your, in your chart, which area, mm -hmm. because that area would be the area of new ideas, new perspectives, new ways of looking at things mm -hmm. in this house, okay? So, for example, Gemini, as you could have guessed already, falls into my 10th house, which is mm -hmm. the house of career and social role and how I show up in the world. This is my most visible spot, so to say. And so that is, of course, very connected with my communication, how yes. I uh, participate in, in podcasts or YouTube uh, live uh, chats and sessions and so on. And I'm super excited and open of what's to come. Yes, I see. Right, so that also it brings energies to everyone. It depends on where they are in your houses. So it's not just the archetypes and sun and moon sign. No, no, no. It really depends on which house it is in your uh, in your chart. But chart, of course, yeah. when we speak about the Gemini, it brings certain themes. Okay, yes. so of course it will be, as I mentioned, it will be uh, related to this thinking kind of energy. It, mm. it does mean bringing new ideas, new perspectives, or rewriting yes. the stories that we tell ourselves, right? Yes. Be it about family, be it about relationships, be it about work, be it around religion, mm. it depends which, which house it is. But also when I look at the, uh, at the aspects which are coming uh, along this new moon, mm -hmm. There are some of uh, interesting uh, aspects in there because, for example, the Venus, Uranus, North Node, and Mercury retrograde will all be in Taurus, okay? Mm -hmm. And so this Mercury retrograde is still kind of reconsidering things, right? And it is the ruler of this new moon. So it will uh -huh. really changing our perspectives. It's really changing the way we think about something. Yeah. And Taurus represents our fixed mindsets where we don't want to change, where we're stuck in the old ways, right? Where we can be super stubborn. Yes. And so, of course, the question is, what should we reassess and reevaluate in order to move forward? Mm -hmm. with more freedom, with more excitement, with less of those kind of old loads, you yeah. know? Yeah. And some very surprising revelations may come up because Uranus is there and it um, loosely conjunct the North Node um, and the North Node is loosely conjunct the Mercury. So it kind of plays out all together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll have Mars and Jupiter conjunct in Aries so <laughs> when when Aries is really this kind of very fiery planet, very fiery energy. So Mars and Jupiter, when they are conjunct in Aries, that for me is almost like combustion engine. The rocket is ready to fly, you know? <laughs> and it's an interesting mix here because you energetically you are ready to fly. You feel a boost of energy. You feel this fire. But your mind is not ready yet. Yeah, your mind is. is still not on the same page with your internal, I don't know, soul or something that gives you inspiration. So it really will say, aha, okay, you want to move forward. Well, what about this? Is, aha, okay, right? yes. 
So there will be some interesting ideas and perspectives that are coming up because mm. Pluto and Capricorn will also be square Venus and Taurus. So that will all be about money. That will all be about how do we work with money? How do we treat money? What are our money habits? Well, mm -hmm. relationships as well, but typically that would be Venus and Taurus can, can really live a life where there is excess, where there is non-responsible non attitude about how do we spend money? What do we own? Mm. Do we need three cars in our garage? Do we need a garage? <laughs> do we need a lot of those things? It's really, you know, there will be a reality check. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. that's good. That's always good to reality check on those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I definitely agree. And then there will be a, a full moon uh, in Sagittarius uh, mm -hmm. on June 14th and the 23 degrees of Sag. Oh. So again, take a look in your chart where it falls. But when we talk about Sagittarius, such themes are focused around our beliefs, mm -hmm. around our truth around our faith, around mm -hmm. our intuition, higher knowledge, okay? It's also about learning and teaching. Mm -hmm. It um, rules academic environment. It rules distant travel. Also some foreign affairs things like immigration. So full moons are bringing typically some kind of illumination, something that we haven't seen before, okay? And so I can see quite a lot of things coming yes. up into light with this full moon, you know, especially with the immigration. I think that's a very hot topic right now in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, oh, uh, yes. with the events that we all know about. And so th th there are a lot of questions around the immigration, academic environment, new learning, teaching, mm -hmm. uh, who will be, you know, educating people who are moving now across Europe and they might know, not know languages that they need. So a lot of those questions manifesting yeah. in, the, in the outer world. But when it comes to our, let's say, personalities, mm -hmm. then really look into what's your truth now after everything's happened everything's changed and shifted for you mm -hmm. uh, and also see how you um now that you are slowly coming back to life let's say <laughs> that's <a> funny <laughs> word but but yeah i mean we will be freer we will have more clarity of what we want to do now yes. the question is can we now incorporate and live in balance between our logic and intuition mm. right because all of those retrogrades and all of this piscean energy that we will we were flowing with for a lot of months for, for a long time it was teaching us to sense it was teaching us to trust it was teaching us to intuit Mm -hmm. And so now that we are kind of out of the season, the question is, will we forget about it so easily or will we actually incorporate it in our new life? Okay. Wow. Yeah. To me, it sounds quite an intense energy though. All of it. <laughs> Maybe this is the way I'm explaining it. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's intense. No, Gemini is not too intense. Gemini is easygoing. It's more about really kind of taking a stock and, and reviewing mm. what, what has not yet been integrated, right? Yeah. And then Sag is also Sag energy is full of optimism. It's pretty, yeah. it's very positive. It wants to bounce back. It wants to go and travel the world again. Mm. It wants a lot of things. But then of course. Um, the universe wants us to change the old tracks it says okay yeah. <laughs> if you want to get back to normal let's make sure that this normal is new normal new. not the old normal the better normal oh yes basically. absolutely absolutely we all need to because... contribute in that. Definitely. <laughs> yes there will definitely be some surprises because uranus is conjunct venus and north node in taurus mm -hmm. that is a very interesting aspect to um 
to follow and to see what it brings because Uranus is really hard to predict. It's mm -hmm. always about some surprises, positive or negative. It really depends mm -hmm. <laughs> on, the, on the person and, and then their chart. But these are surprises of, around Venusian themes, themes, around money, relationships, self-worth, and so on. But since it's conjunct North Node, I would say this can be just sudden shifts for us, which are bringing us towards our future. Okay. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yep. Mm, I'm looking forward to that one. Because I, 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 here. I, yeah, I feel like, I feel like I'm some, some sort of uh, cusp at the moment. The cusp between what and what? Well, from uh, from business perspective, with Italian laws, like also the shop and other projects. And I feel like at the moment it's a bit slow this month, like uh, in sales, but I also haven't done events and I've been on holiday. But I feel the time is going to come that it starts to have like a boost because mm -hmm. there's yep. a lot of events coming. And so, so I'm sort of really curious about that. It's like, well, what? Yeah, how is it going to grow? Yeah, I agree. And we'll be observing as well. Yes. But definitely, definitely the energies are shifting and it's good. Good. And we're shifting along. We are shifting along. That is so true. Wow. Jeff. <laughs> the Gemini season. Is there anything else that you say we need to be aware of or... Are we going with the flow of Gemini? We're going with the flow. We're shifting. We're staying open. We're staying curious. That would be my final line here because Gemini is exceedingly curious. And so let's use this curiosity yes. of trying to reimagine how we can live our life now. How can we shift? How can we be open to change? How can we transform ourselves for the better and mm. transform our community and transform our earth for that matter? Very beautiful. Thank you so much, Jeff. And thank you for listening as well. And as always, please support the show by sharing it to everywhere. We are, you can share the show on IGTV or like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and the website. And obviously also Spotify. Do follow the show as well, show you support. And just like Jeff said, stay curious and keep discovering. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.